Uh, Dr. Beck, let's talk about um, the sciatica, the sciatic uh, pain, which uh, people who have it apparently, um, they're horrified. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us how, what, what can be done. Can there be something done? Um, and especially can there be something done besides surgery, hopefully? Mm-hmm. Well, sciatic pain refers to pain going down uh, your leg typically starting in the back and presumably by a pinched nerve in your back. And uh, typically this will have a kind of electrical quality to it. It will be sort of a lightning bolt down your leg or it can be a numbness or a tingling or electrical shock. Um, and it's uh, it's really actually pretty common in people that have it. It will come and go. And you're right, it scares people because they, they're worried that they're getting nerve damage. They've got a, a ruptured disc in their back that needs to be surgically fixed. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you can have sciatica. One is, again, a pinched nerve in your back, usually from a ruptured disc. It also could be from arthritic spurs in your back that sort of bite down on the nerve. And the second reason I see is uh, your hip muscles can actually pinch the sciatic nerve. You know, the sciatic nerve goes down the back of your leg uh, and through your hip muscles. And people that have really tight hip muscles, particularly uh, men uh, and people that don't stretch very much, uh, this can actually squeeze the sciatic nerve, and what people will find is they get the same symptoms, uh, particularly like when they're driving or sitting or using their leg. They can get these uh, same uh, tingling and shocks uh, down their leg that uh, mimics the sciatic nerve uh, or a pinched nerve in the back. Okay. So, and so what are we dealing about in terms of fixing it? Well, as I tell everybody and I say over and over again, uh, Find out what's causing it. And so if, what you need to do is do testing to see what indeed is causing this problem. Now, if the sciatica or the sciatic-type pain is coming from a pinched nerve in your hip, uh, this usually will have to be tested with nerve testing, which is a procedure that I specialize in. And we can tell if the conduction of that nerve is blocked somewhere in your hip muscles by doing some very specific tests. Uh, the second way we can find out whether you're having uh, problems or where the problem is coming from is by an MRI scan of the back, which is uh, something we usually do a little bit farther down the road. But the, the nerve testing can help us sort out things pretty quickly uh, with um, a minimal amount of discomfort. Wonderful. Okay. And then once it is, um, once we do know what it is, um, again, what what are we talking? Is, is the treatment a little bit the same than with lower back pain? Uh, it's similar. Now, if the problem is coming from a pinched nerve in your hip or the sciatic nerve being pinched in your hip, there's very specific, again, targeted exercises that we have to use for that uh, to help uh, mobilize the tissue around the nerve. Now, if the tissue or the problem is coming from a pinched nerve in your back, there's some specific exercises called McKinsey exercises, uh, which uh, have often been shown to be very effective for that pain going down your leg. And these are specific type of exercises that sort of unload or unpinch the nerve, so to speak. Uh, also, certain medications uh, can help, uh, anti-inflammatory medications, things that takes the swelling down in the nerve, and that will sometimes decrease the uh, pain going down your leg. And there's some other kind of medications, uh, such as Neurontin, which can also help with nerve pain. Okay. All right. And again, surgery in many cases not needed or yes, needed? Uh, in most cases, no. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah, a lot of people like to avoid it, uh, and uh, like I said, we probably see 80 to 90 percent of cases we see are treated successfully without surgery. And in what time frame, more or less? I, I typically see people in a six to eight week time frame to get the what I call acute symptoms down or the the, the hot symptoms down. Right. And then we may need to treat people on and off uh, for sometimes several months. Got it. Got it. And, of course, the person should probably stay in some type of exercise, uh, in some type of therapeutic exercise, uh, you know, very specific exercise. Anyway, I mean, just because he's sporty doesn't necessarily mean he exercises that muscle, right? Right. You know, in the old days, doctors used to put people in bed for this type of problem. You know, they would, they would have a week of bed rest. And now uh, we really encourage people to be as active as possible and, again, use uh, these uh, specific exercises to help treat the problem. I think the key word here is specific exercise because, you know, many of us think we are doing exercise and we might. Uh, we just don't necessarily exercise that one muscles, uh, you know, which, we, which we should. Well, all right. Yeah, you can work against the problem if you're not doing the right exercises. Exactly. Okay. 
Well, good. So um, it's good news that actually the truth is that uh, you know those type of pains, which apparently if you live long enough, everybody gets, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and that, that, that actually there is help and hope, and it makes a lot of sense because many of you doctors say that part of the reason we have these problems today is because of our sedative life, you know, the way we sit all day long and uh, stand, I've been mean, usually sitting, and, uh, and, and etc. So if because of it we get more of that, well, it makes sense that the answer is go and do specific exercise which make even for you uh, sitting all day long uh, in a chair, a computer, or whatever it may be, or... Uh, Otherwise, uh, bending over a machine or whatever it, you know, whatever it might be that you're doing on a daily basis, straining one muscle or putting one thing, going to the opposite side, and uh, and, uh, and and you will know it. Great, great news. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. Beck.